At long last, Tales to Give You Goosebumps, book number one in a six book series that nobody fucking talks about most of the time, or at least not many people. And for good reason, maybe. Maybe bad. But one thing's for fucking shit, this book is overrated. <laughs> oh my god, Tales of Book Number One. So this is the book that started the whole Tales series, and this is my fourth, I believe, Tales review. I meant to review Tales books four and five. I even read book four. And uh, five is definitely one of the better ones, surprisingly. But uh, Tales book one. More, or sorry, it's just straight up called Tales of Goosebumps, the series name. And uh, it shocked me because, well, let's get to the blurb. And now for the blurb. Read Beware, you're in for 10 scares. From an evil babysitter to a remote control that can control more than just a television set. To a teacher who's obsessed with snakes. To a cute, cuddly teddy bear gone bad. Here are 10 spooky stories. Guaranteed to give you goosebumps all night long. Are you sure about that? Because this is by far, and I haven't read book four. I've read five of the six Tales books. This is by far the weakest Tales book. In fact, there were no stories in here that got an A out of 10 or higher. Not even a four out of five stars, if you want to translate that. Uh, fuckers who do that. Oh yeah, that's a rough one. So yeah, this story, or sorry, this whole book overall, really just did not hit. None of these stories hit, like, at all. I think this is easily the worst of the Tales books, and uh, I barely have anything positive to say about this. Not because it was absolutely horrible, but just because there's not a lot to like. So yeah, let's move on to the upsides. So let's start off with the stories that I found to be generally good or above average compared to the rest. That's why we usually start these off, in case you're new here. So, starting off the table of contents here, uh, The House of No Return is the first story here, and it's actually a Halloween story, and it's presumably the house you see on the cover. Yeah, uh, this one is kind of eh, but it's still one of the better ones, <laughs> because it has a very dark and disturbing ending that really saves it, that's what I really like about that one. The main characters are really honestly dickheads they're worse in the episode but they're not likable but in a good sense because you get that uh, good ending event it's kind of like relieving teacher's pet is actually one of my favorites here <laughs> and it's actually one of the worst episodes too because this one has an episode adaptation but teacher's pet is actually not bad i think this version of it where it takes place inside of school is pretty good it involves snakes of course and that's about all you need to know it kind of goes as expected might be a twist reveal involving the teacher being a giant fucking snake, and I like the ending, it's also delightfully dark. But, uh, moving on from that, there's a couple of really bad ones in a row, but then you get to How I Won My Bat, which has another really good dark ending. I love dark endings in Goosebumps, and yeah, there's a decent couple of these uh, in, in the, the stories here, which I do find to be a pretty good positive. But How I Won My Bat had a really good story overall. Not my favorite, however. I think my favorite is coming up in a minute. But how I won my bat, uh, it was decent. Uh, involved this kid getting a baseball bat that was perfect for him, let's just say. And it may or may not have won him a championship that he, might, he was probably about to lose if he didn't get this bat. And uh, greed overtakes him, let's say, because he might want to back out of a deal. And it turns out that he's going to get turned into a statue. <laughs> Uh, if you've ever seen House of Wax, I haven't, but I want to. Basically, that's what happens to him. He gets turned into a wax figure and put up in a museum. Very dark ending, but he's happy, I guess, so I don't know. Good ending, though. Now, uh, Click is just a good idea overall, and yes, you recognize that name as the Adam Sandler movie, which is okay. This was made before that, it's just, uh, they have a similar concept and title. Ensign goes through the episode. Yeah, Click here... Uh, is about this kid named Seth receiving a remote uh, from his father, actually, in the book version here. Uh, he found it, I believe, in like some sort of store. It was sitting in the window, and it was a clearance thing. He bought it for his son, and it may or may not control the world. Yeah, it's pretty powerful, and it leads into some fun shenanigans at school, and it may or may not result in very bad things going on, and there was, let's just say the remote dies. <laughs> 
Well, people are frozen. So you can't undo that, can you? Hmm. No, 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 no. But yeah, I really like that uh, story. Now, Broken Dolls is probably my favorite one here. And that is because it is the most fleshed out and full feeling story from here. We got a lot of stuff going on, but it works because it feels like the most complete of all these stories. And uh, basically, this family visits a little pop-up carnival, and they meet some lady there selling dolls, but they don't buy anything from her, but uh, this girl's little brother, uh, while well, the girl is looking at the dolls, the lady's doing something to him. The may or may not turn him into a doll, not too soon after. And uh, it, it's very dark, it's very creepy. The real highlight of this story is not only like, uh, it, I think it has a message for like family or something because this character hates a little brother, but they really care for him by the end. I like that because you know, you're family. I mean, unless your like, brother is a fucking serial killer, I mean, you have every right to care for him and you should, all right? Especially if he's a little boy, all right? Little brother, be nice to him even if he's a brat. You know, you show him some respect, a human being. And maybe he'll treat you the same. Uh, the ending. Once again, this book has a theme of very good endings, besides in these lesser good stories. The ending of this one is really good. I think it's my favorite uh, ending here, and it's kind of a loop ending where it loops back to the beginning of the story, where it may or may not have a similar start and end, involving broken dolls. Let's just say that. I really, really like that. And the final story in here, Vampire in the Neighborhood, yeah, it was all right. It was very predictable and by the numbers, but it had another dark ending that I quite enjoyed. Uh, that was semi-predictable, but still good. And also, if you want any episode adaptation of this one, I believe someone made uh, a short, like, little, uh, I think, like, a live-action remake of this on YouTube. So, yeah, go watch that. I might link it in the comments if I can, or maybe uh, the description of the video. We'll see. Anyways, yeah, that's all I have to say for good stories and what I liked about them. We'll see endings. Let's move on to the bad ones. Oh my fucking god, there's a lot of bad stories. <laughs> or mediocre, or mid. Oh, Strain Peas is horrible. It is the third story and it's dropping quality insanely hard. Strain Peas fucking sucks. It is gross vomit uh, in 12 pain pages. It's, it's painful pages of a vomiting baby doing slightly creepy shit with an asshole brother for the first half because the baby doesn't even do genuinely despicable shit until the second half of the story. Like, the first half, it's just the baby throwing up in this brother. Oh, I can see why he hates her. He's already assuming that she's a monster. I'm like, dude, there is no evidence to suggest that she is a monster until past a certain point in the story. Before that, like, directly page one, he's like, oh, it's just a monster. It's fucking evil. Satan I can see in this fucking baby. Oh my god, I hate the main character for the first half of the book. The ending is so dumb, I don't even like it. <laughs> no. The vomit, once again, it's so fucking gross. It's everywhere, not done in a good way, like in Ghost Granny. No, it's not fun to read about. A baby vomiting everywhere. So much so that it covers the entire fucking kitchen and... Ugh, I don't even want to talk about it. It's gross. Not a fun fucking time. Strangers in the woods now. It's an alien story. Alright. This sounds like it'd be up my alley, but... <laughs> no. Strangers in the Woods. It's probably the most controversial one, I feel, in this book. At least for me. Personally, I am still just as mixed as I was when I originally read this story. Uh, as I am now. Because I dreadfully hate some aspects about it like there's a major twist thrown in there about what the hell is actually going on in these woods which i find to be so fucking bad but there's a twist ending though doesn't make sense i find it'd be kind of fun and there it's just kind of it's hard to describe how i feel about this one it's just gone a five out of ten because i just can't fucking decide whether i kind of like it or kind of dislike it i hate so much but i like some that makes up for it Ah, oh, it's, it's a very mixed story. Very mixed. And it has some creepy shit, I'll say that. So at least it was decently creepy. But god, that fucking twist about what's going on in the forest is so fucking bad, and it makes no sense in context of everything. Like, what? 
Why? Why? It's just, there's a big question of why. Why wouldn't you tell this person there's a movie being filmed out there? It's so like, what the fuck? Just tell them. No biggie. Don't have to keep it like some big secret. There's a big fucking movie being filmed behind their house. I'm like, shit, I'm sure grandma was excited. Why not tell the little boy or girl? I don't remember the gender of the character. I think it's fucking stupid. Anyways, how I won my, oh, sorry, Mr. Teddy. Night of Living Dummy in 12 pages, and it, it, it had a very bratty, dumbass main character. I did not like her. Enough said. And I forgot to mention this one, Good Friends. <clears throat> the only positive with this one is, once again, the ending. But besides that, this one really reeks. The ending is good. It may or may not be a take on, like, schizophrenia. Yep. Yeah. And I really like that. I really, really like Good Friends' ending. But Good Friends just had a dumbass story that was kind of like a revenge plot kind of like you can't scare me and not a lot happened it's just bickering and arguing and very bad friends yeah i'll just say that the friend characters aren't great and uh it's just it's a bland story it didn't really pick up until the ending yeah yeah this gets an easy like 5.5 out of 10 half the stories here were really like mid or not like above a 6.5 out of 10 but also some of the stories here just really reeked and had a lot of things that reeked about them and i was so generous on the scores in my goodreads review by the way here's all the ratings for each story individually you can pause want to read through them yeah uh all the stories just really reeked in their own ways but there was some that shines but not by much and the only real saving grace of this book is all the endings here mostly are good like really good endings or twists at least yeah so that's my review for tales to give goosebumps tell me what you think about this one below uh do you love it how do you hate it respectable and uh, tell me your thoughts below and i will see you guys in the next one bye